practice mindfulness while driving. Eyes open, for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, for sure, eyes open. But I think I took maybe the analogy a little too literally of where you're watching yourself as, you know, sort of existing. Um, and so, like, I tend to, like, sort of, like, narrate to myself, like, I'm passing trees and I'm seeing cars. And then I realize I'm actually not being mindful because then, like, a car will, like, slip on a break. And I'm like, oh, shit. So maybe that's not. How would you go about doing it? I'm not sure that you're not being mindful. It's just maybe that you're having a preference for seeing something beautiful like a tree instead of paying attention to the road. Yeah. And while driving, I think the clear priority should be paying attention to the road. Uh, beauty should be, you know, aesthetics <laughs> should be lower down the priority list. You know, while walking, that is a little bit easier, right? You're much less likely to get hurt walking and looking at trees at the same time. Driving, I, I certainly recommend um, not taking eyes off the road for more than a brief second, you know? Which, you know, this is, it's kind of funny, but sadly, I mean, we're losing probably dozens of teenagers a day in our country every day because of this, because people are addicted to their smartphones. And if you, if you, if you get a text while you're driving, it's, it's one thing to kind of to look at it, which is bad in and of itself. But if you respond to that thing, which people are doing while they're driving, that is no different than you driving like this with your eyes closed for five seconds. What person in their right mind would drive a car with their eyes closed for five seconds? No one. That is clearly the behavior of someone who is a, who's addicted. Right? That's like a crack who's doing whatever it takes to get the next hit, right? And that's how bad it is. These things can be very addictive. So there's kind of a serious side to this too, which is like when you're driving, I mean, there's a, a <laughs> there's actually a gatha, I don't remember exactly what it is, but um, there's a wonderful teacher that I'm a huge fan of who um, recently passed away actually in Thich Nhat Hanh. And he uses these little poems for almost all of the activities that you have during the day, which I think are very, very skillful. You know, it might be something like drinking water. I recognize that um, you know the clouds and me are not so separate. Something like that. Just something to kind of wake you up a little bit. And the one for driving, is, it sounds so simple, but it's really good. It's like you're sitting in your car and you say, breathing in, driving the car. Breathing out, you know, I'm getting ready, something like that. Breathing in. I know when the car goes fast, breathing out, I go fast too. <laughs> so, so, something like that. But this is something I think we forget. If a car is going 70 miles an hour, we're going 70 miles an hour too. And going 75 miles an hour in a 3,000 pound piece of metal with other three to 50,000 pound pieces of metal, their trucks, around us with our eyes closed for five seconds, I, I'm not a big fan of that as a strategy for living a healthy life, you know. So yes, driving, I think um, the priority is definitely to just pay attention to the road, but what I would encourage you to also notice is that while you're paying attention to the road, from time to time you might just, just check in. So just, you might just mentally know sitting here or driving. And that's all it takes, and as soon as you do that, you'll notice, okay, you're being perfectly mindful. You have this, you're aware of the road, probably more aware than you were before, and more aware than probably 99% of the people around you, but you're also aware of the fact that you're sitting there in the car driving. And that, maybe another way of looking at mindfulness is like, that's, that's what we're talking about here, is this perfect balance of awareness of what is coming in through our senses, things that we deem to be outside of ourselves, simultaneously aware of the inner world, things that we consider to be me, so to speak. And it is, so that balance is actually effortless. It, there's some effort to wake up to it if we've been identifying the thinking. So that's why from time to time you might just mentally note sitting in the car driving. Now what I would encourage you to do from there is absolutely nothing, just drive. This is actually, <clears throat> the more that we, the deeper we get with the practice, this is what, what we end up doing is a good analogy would be like to 
for a bell to make sound, what do you have to do? Sure. Yeah, or, it's, or in the Vietnamese, they have a much nicer way of saying it. You invite the bell to sound, right? So instead of hitting or striking the bell, they say we're inviting the bell to sound, at least in the monastic tradition, the Vietnamese monastic tradition. Um, do you have to keep hitting it for the sound? No. Like if you hit a bell once, if you, if you invite that bell to, sh to sound one time, there's some, it has some natural ability to sustain the sound. It keeps vibrating for a while. Depending on the acoustics and how it's sitting and various things, I mean, that could be making sound for up to 60 seconds without you doing anything else. And I, I'd like you to start thinking of your mindfulness practice in the same way. It's when you mentally note sitting in the chair, even if it's driving a car, it's like inviting a bell to sound. The moment that you know, sitting here driving, you are awake. That you, you have actually achieved the goal. That's the end of the path, for mindfulness. It's just to simply be awake and not be identified with your thinking. Now, and what you'll notice is if you literally do nothing, you might even tell yourself, doing absolutely nothing, you're still awake. And then, depending on how strong the habit is for you to re-identify with thinking, you, that might persist for 10 seconds, 15 seconds. For some people, it might be two minutes or three minutes. And then you'll find that you're just in there talking to yourself again. And then you might invite the bell to sound with, with just another just gentle reminder of sitting here in the car, driving. Boom, right there. You're awake again. And there, it just, mindful, again, mindfulness is our natural state. Being mindful is our natural state. This is something that is our birthright and we've lost as a result of conditioning. We've developed this very bad habit of instead of being mindful, of having this awareness that is not identified with thinking, we're identified with thinking almost all the time. And so there, there's some, even if we're the most heedless person in the world, once you wake up, there's at least a second or two of just pure awareness, which you can all experiment. Let's just do a little test right here. If you just say, sitting here doing absolutely nothing. For at least five seconds, I would say, for everybody, was that not about as mindful as you've ever been? Literally do, making no effort. You just commanded yourself to make no effort. And that's about as awake as you're ever going to be. Probably as awake as you'll ever be, I would uh, hypothesize. But then what starts to happen? Maybe three seconds, five seconds, there's this little voice of doing it right. Is there something special supposed to happen? Like, are lightning bolts going to hit? You know, like, right? Isn't there supposed to be like tears of joy or something like that? What about heaven on earth? You know, whatever comes up. And then, so the practice then is to just say, oh, okay, well, let's listen to that. And if we get really lost, just you can invite the bell to sound with just sitting here doing nothing. And then boom, there's just things happening. There's just, there's a body sitting here, it's breathing, there's some sounds. That's it, that's, uh, that's ultimate reality right there. So that, um, that's how I would suggest practicing while driving is, in summary, <laughs> to be prioritizing what's in front of you, uh, or actually, to be most precise, prioritizing whatever is in your direction of motion. So hope if, you're in, if you're backing up, I'd encourage you to look where you're backing. <clears throat> um, yeah, and then from time to time, it might not be a bad if you see something beautiful, there's no harm in looking, but just remember that taking your eyes off of what's in front of you, going 70 miles an hour, uh, there's some inherent risk built into that proposition. So maybe better is just to recognize that we don't even need to be, just driving is enough to be perfectly happy. We don't need to be looking for a beautiful sunset or a tree over there or flowers. It, you'll, and this is something you can verify through your own experience. If you drive for 30 minutes and you practice the way I just described, especially if it's just open road, it's a little bit trickier when somebody cuts you off and then you, you were right there, you felt like you are in the zone, you're like, oh, that son of a sea cookie man just cut me off, and then you're like, oh, I gotta start over, you know, I, I'm all worked up, I'm all angry, you know.
So uh, that it's a little more challenging. But if you're on an open road, I think you'll find that that can be just as just as beneficial of a practice of mindfulness as sitting still with your eyes. Hello, my friend, and thank you for taking a minute to check out this video here at the Mindfulness Edge. I hope that you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Please feel free to leave any questions that you have about the practice down in the comment section below uh, if you think I could be of help. I, I do my best to answer as many of those questions as I can, and I enjoy helping wherever I can. If you found the video helpful, uh, please feel free to subscribe to this channel and make sure that you never miss any of the videos that we post. And you could also feel free to go ahead and hit that little like button. That will help other people to see this video and hopefully it will be of help to them as well. And if you like, I have a little gift for you. If you head on over to the mindfulnessedge.com, I'd be happy to give you free sample chapters of my book called The Mindfulness Edge. So until next time, I hope you are well.